This is the build OGM call for August 24th, 2021. Um, and I'm hoping Pete joins us because I was looking to start building. Uh, I realized yesterday on the free jury spring call that um, a thing that would be extremely useful, I think in many different ways would be to configure up some of the different projects that we're talking about as fundable projects with a project plan and a budget to figure out how many hours or roughly what uh, what shape it would take. Hey, Bentley. Hey, Pete. Hey. <clears throat> Greetings. I was just saying that in yesterday's Free Jerry Spring call, it dawned to me late that um, that having uh, a list, a wall, a dashboard, hi, Stacy, uh, of projects to fundable projects that would sort of build pieces of what's going on would be extremely useful. So I was interested in going there, but before going there, was interested in just a general check-in for anybody who'd like to report anything relevant to this umbrella. Good. Um, Pete, shall we dive in? Uh, go ahead, Mark Antoine. Uh, I'll just repeat my, uh, a lot of this is already in uh, Sensorica. Did you have a look? <laughs> Uh, a lot of which. And did you have a look at how Sensorica does it? Does project planning? No. Yeah, exactly. Project accounting. Oh. It's, I, I, I totally recommend doing it. Uh -huh. uh, the, what they're doing, and of, of course they're rewriting it now, so it's the, their legacy version at this point. Right. But they have... They, uh, projects and people post tasks in the project and people can grab tasks because it's very much network. It's not an organization. And every task has, here's what we need and here's the entrance and ex expected extrants. And uh, so anybody who contributes anything to the phase of the project gets accounted as having contributed to the project. So that project rewards can be distributed to anybody. And that includes sometimes, you know, I went and bought say the ink for the 3D printer that we used, or I bought the 3D printer and that right. you used. And so that was part of the uh, in usage inputs versus cons consumables. Um, and of course time, And but what's really interesting is the whole distributed nature of the accounting. Like anybody can take on a task and say, okay, I'm doing this. So and this is using the resources events and agents accounting philosophy, yes. it appears. Yes. <clears throat> um, okay. And this is not open source. It is. It is open source. Okay. It is open source. It's okay. a Django framework, first version, and a new version will be based on Holochain. Uh, wow. Okay. So it sort of bridges a lot of different things that we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, and friend, friendly neighbors and all of that. Yeah. Um, cool. Let me stop the screen share. Um, thank you. So I have not taken a good look. And TB Brastavicianu is one of the people on my list of people to sort of introduce myself to and say hi to. And it sounds like uh, an invite there would be great. Hi, Hank. He, he's on vacation. I'll tell you when he's back. And, yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> thank you. Uh, just on that note, there's also, I mean, similar to maybe for inspiration would be um, Open Collective. Mm -hmm. And co is Comakery in the same bucket or is Comakery doing a different layer? I'm not sure. And then there's also uh, uh, disco.co. No, what is it? TB actually told me that, I mean, he's been in that business for 10 years and that, for example, Disco Co-op took a lot of ideas from Sensorica. Now, that's his claim, but, uh, but he said it was, you know, actually quoted for inspiration. And they do use a lot of the concepts, the React concepts. And Open Collective, let me just uh, share a screen on a couple of these things. So Open Collective, uh, PM Mancini is a friend, although I haven't talked with her in a while. Um, so this is this is the other group. And then uh, Disco.coop, right? And uh, there we go. There we go. A distributed cooperative organization. And my machine is behaving very slowly. Sorry about and that. And just one other mention that's even less than a distributed 
uh, cooperation is um, bounty source. It's a way to, you can put uh, open source software, you can put feature requests up and people that can crowdsource it. Right. But it's kind of related. That's not fair. Yeah. Um, cool. So let me create a new category for these three at least. Um, and then let me find bounty source in my browser and go from there. Um, cool. And it, sound, it seems like uh, this is a common problem and lots of entities are going after it. And I think one of the interesting questions here is architecturally, how is everybody going after it? Meaning how does it layer in? <clears throat> and then in my background question, what are the next two stacks? Uh, the second stack is the organizational stack. I think these are all candidates for large layers, large slices of the organizational stack. Does that make sense? Um, yeah. The, 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 um, basically, this is distributed accounting, and it's. I think it's it's very important. But you're right. There are other aspects, like all the regulation things that. Um, David talks about is a totally distinct layer, the question of uh, recipe ownership, mm -hmm. who owns the, the, the knowledge commons and so on and so forth. What is interesting about the way they're trying to do it is they're very much compatible with the whole semantic web and activity streams and st stacks, which makes it easy to have a public stream of activity. So if I call this category, this subcategory distributed accounting of value flows, is that descriptive? Uh, on the P2P wiki, it's called peer funding. Peer funding. I will add that. Thank you. Is peer funding the same as account distributed accounting of value flows? I really uh, like that. It is, it is not. They're related. Yeah. Because I think that's a perfect descriptor. Huh. And uh, also related would be things like community currencies. Right. Or community economies. Okay, so I just created kind of parallel categories. I'll share screen again in a second just uh, to show you what I've built. Um, but I just created uh, parallel categories, distributed accounting of value flows and peer funding. I was going to, I was just going to add peer funding to the other one and just put it in parentheses. And then Pete uttered the sentence not quite the same thing. So I made a separate category and I don't actually understand the difference. So um, Jerry, for peer funding, you might want to grab the link off of uh, the chat. Off P2P, uh, off of the chat, yes, we'll do. Or and where you can search for it either way. I will do that. Thanks, I'll find the chat here. Um, cool, oh, sorry, the chat in Mattermost? Yeah. Good, thanks. Excellent. Um, so just uh, there, we already have like three candidates sitting in front of us. Is there like a bake off here or what's a, what's a reasonable way to start exploring and thinking about these? We have connections into some of these communities. Uh, some, some extended OGMers have already been in some of these communities. Mark Antoine, you've got some knowledge. I think, have you been in the conversations or in the, on the platforms at all? I'm sorry, you're, you're busy making your coffee, but. Yes, um, I had a conversation with uh, TB. So yes, I'm in conversation. I, I am having that conversation with him and I think he's definitely somebody worth talking to. And uh, as I said, I will invite him when we're <laughs> done, uh, when he's back. Sounds excellent, thank you. Um, so any thoughts about just a framework for assessing these? Should we create a matrix decision aid and just uh, figure out what uh, what metrics matter and what how, how each of them falls on it? I, I would turn things uh, uh, upside down a little bit. I think um, as, as somebody who's got a, a number of projects that could get funded um, uh, and, and kind of also related to a dashboard of you know things that OGM could fund, um, I think um, looking at me or looking at Bentley, um, I feel like we, the, the person who wants to get something sponsored should write that up, right? I should have a write up for Massive Wiki and for um, uh, distributed directory project and you know a bunch of stuff. 
Um, similarly, at Bentley, should have a bunch of write-ups. Um, I think then uh, OGM wants to work with the, the makers, the, the founders, whatever you want to call them, and make sure that those things get into a directory on the OGM wiki. Um, I think also somebody like me or somebody like Bentley, the makers, um, uh, should be going out to, to each of these and figuring out how to get listed or which ones make sense or, or whatever. Um, so I, I would have the makers drive that and OGM assist rather than having OGM try to do a top-down thing where we kind of try to shepherd everybody into the same thing. Um, is there, I, I'm assuming that that, that these platforms do more than what you're intending to do with massive team because a piece of this is could this be emulated or part you know, also part, part massive, for massive. instance a, a, a simple thing for massive is um opal needs to get done right um uh, opal is a software application that acts as a nice pleasant front end to massive wiki so that's a, a nice separable project so massive wiki is kind of this big you know vision statement movement thing um opal is a tightly constrained thing that you can say here's the architecture for it here's the use cases for it you know here are the acceptance criteria for you know version zero version one version two um so that's the kind of thing that presumably i could take over to sense sensorica or maybe open collective or whatever right or bounty source or whatever mm -hmm. um and then um so so ogm has already done me a service uh as a maker just by the last five or ten minutes of discussion right here's the the five things that you should go look at um and see if you can get funding that way um so that's a big help to me already. Um, I feel like it's on me now to drive that forward a little bit more um, as I'm looking for funding for Opal. And then OGM and I should be collaborating, uh, checking in every week or something like that. Hey, Pete, uh, so you were going to check out Bounty Source for Opal. Did that work? What didn't work? How can we help? You know, do you need a contact somewhere else? You know, yada, yada. So I think my mental model might be off here. Um, because I was thinking of these projects as infrastructure you would use the way you would use Salesforce or SAP, that you would basically take an organization, whatever that is, and kind of flow onto it and start using it consistently as a platform for interactions. But what I'm hearing you say is that it's more like, hey, there's a marketplace for people who could source funding or, or pitch projects or whatever, and you could post things the way you would post on multiple, you know, the day before eBay uh, owned all of auctions, you would take your, your item and you might post it on several auction sites. So am I, am I just ask a little ass backwards? Go ahead, Mark Antoine. I think there's two kinds, two, two aspects. One is, you know, I have a project I wanted funded, which can be done on crowdfunding and there's all kinds of open source crowdfunding things and there's the but open source does allow for more distributed oh bounty for this feature right so it's more a team ish but i think what the next step after that is not just the feature bounty but the organizational uh like the 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 the, the, the how does this project fit in with uh how do we divide the work? How do we structure the work? How does it interact with other projects? How do we, and this is the level up. And this is where, uh, I don't know if the interact with other projects is part of the platform yet. What again, since Eric has done with the REA is very much this idea that the, you can break down the, even the management in pieces and give the pieces to whoever is uh, enabled competent and uh, keep track of contributions at any level. That's great. Uh, it's one piece, it's, it's a valuable piece. Uh, but the, what I think we're all missing is, okay, the, the, the thinking team-wise is, is a skill, but thinking how does my project fit in the larger ecosystem of projects and needs? And that is where a more global um, perspective and any tool that can enhance perspective of the needs is missing. And I think this is where a community like OGM is extremely useful because you know we are here as 
users of these tools and saying, I mean, I'm more creator than user, but still, I mean, where users and makers can collaborate on, okay, this is what I need the tool to do, right? Pete, mm -hmm. do you want to add? Yeah, I, um, we, we do a fair bit of that already um, uh, on Mattermost. So, and, and it's supra OGM, right? It's not just OGM that's uh, in that collaboration. So on OGM, there's, you know, uh, Bentley and I are, are talking in multiple channels about um, working on Opal or working on the uh, Easy Editor or working on the Zoom chat uh, parser um, or, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, this happens a lot in Flotilla too, which um, I would say Flotilla is adjacent to and not, not part of OGM, but it's adjacent to OGM and, you know, kind of encompasses, it's within the network of network of networks, right? So I feel like we do that a, to a significant degree already, we maybe do it, um, uh, and and you know actually that that network spills out. So I'm working, you know, I I, I talk on Telegram with um, uh, with Tiberius or Zeke or um, Yarrow or uh, um, Yuri. Uh, so right now we're talking about Opal in Telegram on. Um, linked open wisdom commons, uh, which is um, uh, um, which is, you know, kind of another organization, a little bit like OGM or a little bit like Ecolab or something like that. So it's not like these conversations aren't happening and they're 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 happening with a decent set of folks too. Um, I think um, maybe if we get out a little bit more into the open world uh, with Open Collective or Bounty Source or maybe Sensorica, I, Jerry, to answer your question a little bit, it's, most of these look like platforms and operators to me. They're, it's not just, you know, COTS software that you say, okay, let's tilt up a Sensorica um, uh, instance. And they look more like um, it's a software platform and the operation of the platform. Uh, open Collective is the same kind of thing, right? You, you go you go into open collective you don't clone the open collective platform and use it as right. as a as an accounting mechanism or something but you so, go in i'm i'm almost there but not quite there meaning <clears throat> you go into it meaning you're just using it like you would be a poster on ebay or reddit or you use it as its infrastructure for your distributed ecosystem and then you're kind of in sensorica but not in the other one because uh, are you are you cross posting? A, let's say you float Opal. Is Opal cross posted to the, all these platforms, or do you sort of make a choice about which which ecosystem to live in, where you have these discussions about how Opal relates to other mod, you know, all those kinds of things? Mark Antoine. Yeah, uh, I think there's really many scenarios here, and I won't speak for the other systems, but I think if you use Sensorica, the um, organization, then you would be in involved in Sensorica and making it into a Sensorica project. And then, yeah, you're, I, I don't know if you'd cross pitch it. So maybe not, and maybe it's fine. I don't know. But there's a totally distinct thing of doing, which is to spin off your Sensorica clone using the Sensorica software because that's open source and you can spin your own. And then, of course, you can. Uh, you're doing a sensorica like organization and then you're free to cross post. I don't know that they'd be against cross posting, but what I'm saying is sensorica as an organization, not as a software, does act as a weird kind of an umbrella for efforts, if only for legal reasons, if only for, you know, this is the organization doing this, which is not the same as, uh, say, Kickstarter, where you're uh, I'm my organization and I'm using the Kickstarter service for my crowdfunding. It is different. Um, so I, I feel like the thing that we need, I, I don't feel like we need as, as much as it would be fun to have um, dis distributed accounting or, or anything fancy, fancier than you know a quick ledger and Google Sheets. Uh, we're not at the scale where we need you know anything fancier than that. Um, uh, I feel like we're doing decent uh, project communication, collaboration, looking for resources. Uh, you know, for instance, Bentley and I talk about this, the software architecture for uh, Opal and how that interacts with his idea for 
uh, a WYSIWYG editor for Massive. But, but it feels like any, any muggle coming in and trying to figure out how to cooperate and what to do will never find the places where you're, you and Bentley and you and TB and you and everybody else are actually talking, that this is unique to you because you're extremely cooperative this well, way. But, yeah, but, yeah, but an, ordinary kind of. an ordinary person walking in this crowd will never find this. Um, I'm not sure that, uh, so Opal is not at the point where a muggle. Would, I just used Opal as any example, but, but I'm just well, trying to say, and, you know, and, or even something like massive, massive is not quite yet to muggle level. Um, yeah. um, and, you know, and massive has actually had between Kiko lab and OGM, it's had a good, um, good contribution from muggles. Uh, so Wendy Elford kind of counts as a muggle. Um, Parmjit um, counts as a muggle. And she and I had a, a wonderful time working on Massive Wiki and, right. and uh, her project. So I, th I think that the thing that, that we're missing right now, I feel like, and maybe Bentley and I haven't done as much as we could, but I feel like the thing that we're missing right now is what we would call in the startup world distribution, right? Um, and kind of like what you're saying, you know, um, a thousand or 10,000 muggles looking at this thing going, yeah, I would pitch in five bucks to see an easy front end to, you know, or, or a, a collaborative personal knowledge manager like Rome or like uh, Obsidian, but, but better, you know. So that's the thing that we're missing. And that's the thing where I can look at Open Collective or Bounty Source or Sensorica. And so, you know, I, you know, spinning up a, an instance of Sensorica gets me the software, but it doesn't get me the community. And right now, a community of people who are not us and people who have uh, time and money to invest is kind of what we need. That's that that's the, the, the part that we're missing, I think. I, I so agree. then I, I think Mark Antoine also, I, I, would, I would agree that um, if I took Opal, I wouldn't shop it around to, to five things. But what I would do is I would log into each one and start a draft project or whatever and say, okay, when they, when they ask this question, that's where it didn't make sense for me. This platform is probably not the right fit for whatever reason, right? So yeah. you, you kind of pick one and, and center there um, to, um, uh, because you, won't, you, you don't want to uh, disperse your effort you know, you don't want to spray and pray. You want to like hunker down on the one that's a good fit and, and uh, you know, invest time and energy in getting, get, get it going. Right, so, so two things. One is I, I would like to create a service that responds to a question Stacy asked a couple of calls ago. I don't, I'm not sure it was on this call. It was on one of our many calls of, hey, I have two hours to, do, to, to donate to something. I'm really good at these skills. Where can I apply those skills within our ecosystem with, with, a, trusted, with a trusted party? And that would be great. Like, like that'd be, and so it's not just where do I invest money in a project to fund, which is Kickstarter, Indiegogo, Akiva, what have you, but where do I take my particular skill set and who needs my skill set is a second layer to that. So I totally get that. And then I appreciate that, Pete, I think what you're saying is let's do um, it, it sort of test, sense, and respond from the ground up rather than have a bake off and make some kind of a platform choice for OGM, whatever OGM is it only being a movement, not an organization, I guess, um, which I totally like. Um, but then I think, I think the end product of that, whatever that process is, the end product of it is we sort of make a choice and we're like, oh, we're gonna be disco co-op folks or, oh, we're mostly going to use this. And if you wanted to go see our dashboard, it lives in that ecosystem, whether we've spawned it off here or not. And all of that said, when I opened this call, the direction I thought I was heading in or I thought we would be heading in was, how do we build a whole bunch of markdown files, each of which contains a product plan, project plan, each of which will get rolled up into a simple display device in Massive, okay? And so the first thing Mark Antoine said, you know what, this is much better done in these other platforms than we opened up that, which is a fascinating conversation to me. Lovely that many of these are open source, lovely that we're connected to many of this, and it feels like these are integral parts of, and, and by the way, the, you know, the meta currency project was going to be this as well. And Holochain is a cleaving off of a, a, a the calving of a, of a big iceberg of the meta currency project into the great seas of, of, of open source and, and this turbulent world. And had the rest of meta currency been in here, we would be talking about them in the mix as well. Now Holochain, I think, is a different piece of the platform that some of these platforms may try to live on top of. But but uh, Art and uh, Eric Harris Braun and <clears throat> uh, Mark uh, Marc Antoine Nubel, that no, was his name. Uh, 
Jean-Marc, I'm forgetting the third person in metacurrency, they've been working on this problem for 30 years, right? Uh, Jean-Francois Nubel, I think. Um, I can look it up. It, he's in my brain, of course. Anyway, um, so, um, so I like the sense and respond kind of approach to this. Uh, I, I, how do we unify that so that we learn from what each person or each group posting something has, has figured out? What worked, what didn't work? Do we, do we need a framework for assessing each probe? Because probe, sense and respond, sorry, I was just reading uh, John Boyd's famous deck, uh, his discourse on, on combat. And, and like, unless you're communicating heavily with the little units that are busy probing the enemy, you don't learn anything and it doesn't actually work. So you need very good communication. <laughs> Sorry yeah. to apply war metaphor to our project here, but I, Boyd is is a you know a systems theorist. Yeah, um, yeah. They happen to be working with war, but um, yeah. Uh, so um, so one thing to back up a tiny bit. Um, my guess is that you, you were thinking that we would end up kind of centered on one platform. My guess is that we're going to end up centered on a couple different platforms for different things. So it may be that software you know, goes to bounty source and hardware or 3D printing or something like that goes to Sensorica. And, and I, I think there's another thing that OGM can do that's beyond the platforms that we just listed out here, right? So um, if I, I, I think of the, um, the grant writing exercises, especially that, that uh, Lauren and Kika Lab kind of wanted to get into, right? Um, it, I, I think OGM has the opportunity to say, oh, look, you're trying to um, uh, 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 actually you're, um, uh, you're trying to do emergent event sense making. Um, that's kind of a social structure. It doesn't make sense for the, the, the you know, you're a maker and you're building something. It's more of a social thing. Uh, and it talks about misinformation and along with uh, Sensorica, Open Collective, and Bounty Source, we also know a bunch of uh, NGOs or foundations that give money that are, have, you know, that work in misinformation. Here's the three, the three uh, grant makers that you want to talk to. Here's the grant templates that, that we have in our library for talking to, you know, MacArthur and, and um, Craig Newmark and whatever, right? Um, so I think that's, if, if I'm thinking of OGM doing that, it's not just, you know, these platforms, it's also, you know, uh, here's the small business administration playbook, you know, um, uh, here's the service core of uh, retired executives playbook. Um, let's get you going, right? Mm -hmm. So to answer your question about probing and sensing, I think um, OGM has an opportunity and maybe some of the folks here and maybe some of the larger the larger uh, OGM network has an opportunity to pick up and run with emergent event sense making uh, Delta Surge or Opal or um, WYSIWYG front end um, uh, and do it right. Do the thing. Um, say, hey Pete, uh, let's have a couple. You know, let's have a couple. Let's start up some weekly meetings and in three or four weeks uh, figure out how Opal got funded, right? Or, or Opal is on the path to getting funding. Um, there's, a, there's an on-ramp to, to shopping it out even, right? Which um, Bentley and I are kind of in the throes of for our various projects. It's like, uh, so do you have a roadmap? Do you have, a, you know, do you have uh, some uh, estimates of cost? Do you have, you know, a scope and a scale? Do you have an architecture picked out? Um, do you need an architecture bake off? You know, all that kind of stuff. So um, I certainly could could use help in, in kind of operationalizing the turning a uh, bunch of crazy ideas and discussions all over the web um, into, you know, a, a, a project plan and a timeline and a budget and a set of hypotheses um, in, in phases and, you know, working to get that into, you know, do we post that on Sensorica? Do we post it on Open Collective? Do we post it on Bounty Source? Do we go out to talk to MacArthur? Do we tell, go out to talk to Craig Newmark? So do we end up with a page on Massive uh, that is a display, a table display that tells us and has a link to whichever of those platforms this particular project got posted and where to track it, but that that becomes our dashboard maybe? Yeah, that sounds great. I mean, that seems very doable. Um, and then I'm really interested 
in the mosaic or puzzle map of these various parts, because what I'm trying to get to is a place where um, uh, Massive has posted six projects, uh, wherever it's posted them. Uh, and then uh, Trove has posted three projects wherever it's posted them. And then OGM as a movement is, has a map of how these different pieces uh, fill in different parts of, of, of OGM's mosaic. Of how do we build the collaborative sense-making uh, infrastructure that allows us to have different kinds of maps in an infrastructure that separates data and blah, 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 with exciting new visualizations, right? And, and maybe we have a hundred or 200 different projects that we're trying to get funded, some of which come from each of the entities that are floating through our, our movement, our ecosystem. Um, and, and the conversation about what that mosaic looks like is really important. And, 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 I'm, and I don't know where we're having that yet. I think it's being had in small bites and small chunks all over the place, but I think that that needs to be held as well. Um, does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. What it makes me think of is um, uh, enterprise system architecture. Um, partly I'm be betraying my background or, or belying my background or something. Um, but um, a big company has that kind of mosaic map, right? Um, here's what we use for accounting. Here's what we use for um, uh, asset management. Here's what we use for HR systems. Here's what we use for payment and payroll. Here's what we, you know, and um, and somebody in enterprise system management um, has, and and I have to say, by the way, um, the the way I have seen that work. Um, uh, there can be a lot of emergent stuff, but you really want um, one person or a very small number of people on a council who run, you know, you want, when you're doing architecture, you, you kind of want a master architect. You want somebody at the, at um, a locus uh, saying, yeah, all of these things make sense together. Um, so I, I kind of wonder as you went through that, that, you know, that uh, mosaic, um, uh, we've got our love uh, for collective and decentralized, but um, when you're talking about architecture, you really need to figure out how you do the centralization and coordination um, because that's what architecture is kind of. Um, but yeah, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, there's there's also like fractally down, there's there's other, other similar things. Um, massive wiki needs kind of a, an architecture you know, and we and Bill and I have actually worked on some of those diagrams, right? Where it's like, this is the editing piece, this is the synchronization piece, um, this is the collaboration piece, um, and you know we can ask questions like, do we swap in Git or Fission or um, uh, or Nextcloud uh, for the synchronization and the the versioning? Um, and we do those kinds of conversations already. And then a little bit above that is. Um, uh, Bentley and I talking through, okay, so um, how does Opal share components with the um, WYSIWYG editing front end that's doing things that are partly massive and partly other stuff, right? Um, so that, that architecture diagramming goes on, you know, up and down, uh, up and down the scale. And, and we're doing a fair bit of it already. So just to overgeneralize, but back in the day, what would happen would be uh, Tom Siebel would invent a Salesforce management app, and then they would start buying, they got successful, they would start buying other things, and you'd have a roll-up. You'd basically have a Titan platform like Salesforce is now that tried to do everything for everyone, where you kind of had to buy into the platform, where all these dependencies and contingencies happen, and if the vendor was aggressive, they would get platform lock-in, right? And then there's, there's a there's a flip side of that, which is it, it, it reminds me a little bit of um, Coase and the theory of the firm. There's um, there's transaction costs. You know, uh, you, you can build your system out of like various components. Um, but if you pick a vendor and the vendor is decent and promulgates decent inter internal standards, at least. Um, you start to reduce transaction costs between your um, your various systems that you need to integrate, right? So you kind of see the same thing. Uh, same thing happens in open source. Um, so you get you do get centralization. You don't get um, 
uh, you don't get the weird monoculture of single vendor stuff, but you do get centralization around standards, right? So, um, so when I needed versioning um, and sharing for Massive Wiki, um, I picked Git because Git is used by most people, right? And when I say, hey, um, can we collaborate and I'm using Git, what are you using? The answer is going to be, well, I'm using Git too, let's collaborate. Mm -hmm. um, so there's there's activity, even in a distributed system, you have activities which centralize towards architectural choices um, and architectural choices start to go together too, right? Um, if you pick Kubernetes versus whatever other thing you would pick, there's a whole bunch of, a uh, whole suite of stuff that goes along with Kubernetes. So that pattern of, you know, you pick, you pick Siebel or you pick Microsoft or something like that, even though we associate that with these, um, I was gonna say predatory, I don't know if that's the, exactly the right word, but um, uh, exclusionary vendors uh, um, and closing vendors. Um, th we don't want the enclosure part of that, but we do actually want the um, working towards um, uh, a suite of, you know, protocols and systems and, and architectures and stuff like that, that all interoperate together. So that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. Um, and, and OpenERP apparently is now Udo or Odoo or something like that. It was an, ent an entity, unless um, you meant uh, Mark Antoine OpenERP as a general category, which is, I think maybe, you no, know, <clears throat> you meant the vendor I did, company. I did mean the product, yes. Yeah, that they renamed. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I forgot. Um, yeah, no, the, general agreement with a lot of what you're saying. And, and, and the question is how to do a network ERP, right? It's, yeah. it's, it, it's not just beyond enclosure, it's for a kind of less organization centric. So I can be on my ERP node, you can be on your ERP node and we can share activity. Uh, and, this is, and this is why I think the value flows because they're thinking about sharing across nodes with activity streams uh, is still relevant, I think, to some of the thinking that's happening. And, it, and, it, and, sorry, and I mentioned glass frog, like the, the, the notion of shared governance is extreme. And, and again, something else, it's not the same as ERP. It's about, you know, shared project definition. It's, it's another concept and who does what in a distributed organization. Yep. So in this world, I can envision, although I can't play it out all the way in my head, that HRM dissolves and we individuals who are working on various projects as part of various communities wind up having a preferred home where we dock and do our books, so to speak. And, and, and every entity that hires us merely connects up to our profile and our books. That's how we get paid. That's how we obey the law. Uh, that's how all those kinds of things happen, but they are no longer centralized inside of one company, which has an you know HRMS package that everybody who's working with that company must use. In fact, it becomes sort of this constellation of people on different platforms that obey the same sort of interoperability principles. But but then individuals would have would would, would connect to and stay on their preferred platform over time. ERP as a distributed service. Yeah. And that's why I wrote rollups versus rollouts. If, if, if not, the 90s were the era of the rollups, where, where we got these mega enterprises, maybe what we're doing now is we're rolling out the functionality across many suppliers in interoperable network ERP-ish webs or something. I, I think I would differentiate between ERP and, and enterprise architecture. Uh -huh. um, uh, ERP kind of manages, you know, I don't know, resources yep um, but there's there's a bunch of stuff beyond that uh, like security or um, uh, collaboration or things like that 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 show up in an enterprise architecture framework but don't aren't aren't necessarily ERP and strict ERP fair enough I like that a lot and I think that the language is changing as the concept is changing and the ERP is very much the the traditional enterprise software approach. Um, and so I hadn't seen enterprise architecture framework, Pete, thank you. Um, where does that put us in terms of what should we do next? <clears throat> How do we walk into this? Um, it is right that we all need to write out our 
projects. Hey, I, I would like to come back next week with a list of projects that need, you know, better definition and, and more funding. I, I, I will submit something. I think we need more criticism of projects also. Uh, right now, I, we've had <clears throat> a lot of us have this idea and this is what we think is worth doing. And, you know, I've been a bit relentless in my criticism of your project. Uh, and, and we need more, okay, how does this project work with that? How does that, you know, asking those questions about is that really the, the thing we need to build or what is the uh, the fit between uh, goal and means and things like that. Which is that that discussion is uh, similar to Jerry's conception of a mosaic of of systems that that plot different um, you know solution points in the the larger solution space that that Absolutely. we understand that we need. Um, Another. Go ahead, Bentley. I was going to say uh, another quick thought is uh, similar to criticism is the idea of kind of validation and part of marketing. So, you know, kind of testing the waters to see who's interested. Um, like recently, I, I did a, a quick um, uh, Zoom chat formatter. And, you know, there's a little bit of interest. And then, of course, you know, only 2% uh, converted, which is actually fairly good. So, um, yeah, anyway, so having a process around getting, getting feedback on from the ideas from potential users along with the criticism on the architecture would, would, would be interesting. And this also brings up that in, I'm in two communities where um, they're based on projects that are trying to save the world in very specific ways. And one of the things both communities have is a meeting where you can come and bring in your project and then it's kind of like a shark tank where people kind of try and give you tips and advice and suggestions. Um, so maybe, yeah, that's just an idea. Actually, Shark Tank isn't really a place where you get tips and advice and suggestions, but I'm just saying. Uh, it's they of, they, it's uh, sharks, they give you criticism. <laughs> yeah, 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 but they're, yeah, but they're not mostly trying to help. They're mostly trying to like figure out how to win big on your thing. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> There's there's a lot of framework to Shark Tank that that is useful though. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, he's hearing Mark Cuban saying, "Here's how I evaluate your your product." Um, that kind of stuff is super super amazing, right? Or, or even um, yeah. hearing him say, "There's no market for X" or something like that. You know? Yeah. 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 Uh, Klaus, go ahead. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a it's a catch twenty two because I've I've been exposed now to two groups who had I forwarded one of them, uh, Jared is uh, Felix, you know, who is a friend of uh, Gills. And they have like a phenomenal idea. It's well articulated. It's well laid out. But you need now resources to hire people who can work on this. You know, and with, so so, and you can't really carry this forward in any way un, until there are some professional resources that that can actually do the work. It's it's very frustrating. So I think so I think the notion here is that putting up a map of these projects, each with a budget, each fundable. That means that participants in the broader ecosystem are now swinging from vine to vine of funded projects. And that's how they make a living ongoing is they're busy choosing which of these projects will take their time and energy and, and get them paid for the next stretch of time. And they may have three to six overlappy projects that hopefully don't all time out on the same day or then they're like looking for work in lots of different places. But I think this ecosystem that we're talking about, this, this way of seeing what's on the big board that I might want to play on uh, and, and who would I like to play with is a part of the new economy. And I don't know that that equals job security the way getting hired by some company that was going to have a hard time not hiring you uh, did in the past. But I, I sense that this is like where we're headed. Yeah, freelance superhero um, and, technology. And, and freelance needs to be <clears throat> like there's many ways in which freelance can be much more secure, including small teams that band together to do freelance work as teams. I think that's interesting. And I don't think anybody's really paying attention to that. Uh, you know, high impact teams that it, they built the database back end for three startups. They know they're really good at it. They're friends. They have a that they're really like boom and uh, and they want 10% of your equity and then they'll go away after they've installed this thing or, or something like that, right? But that, that could easily be a team that gets known and hired in for lots of lots of engagements. The, the other component to this is, is money. Um, 
so Klaus, Klaus points out a good problem. You know, you can have the greatest idea in the world, but if you don't have the professional people that you need working on it, whatever they are, um, it's you you can't make progress, right? So, and the way that you get the professional people is you hire them, and to, to hire them you need the money, and you know, so um, we have to we have to bootstrap ourselves out of that, or or, or get better at boot bootstrapping ourselves out of that. So I just want to dive a little deeper on hire them, those two words, <clears throat> because hire them presumes a job and a salary, I think. No, I, okay. I whenever I, well, sorry, freelancer hire okay. means, um, here's a thousand bucks, can you get this done in, in, in 10 hours, you know? Um, okay, so, so, the, so the, but the, but the process I was describing a moment ago might fit that then. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. So, where, so, where, where does it fail? Where does it not fit that? Where does it need to be improved? Uh, where does what? Uh, the, the idea that there's a bunch of project plans up that and that individuals basically swing from vine to vine inside these projects by being part of a team that has a budget, et cetera. Like, where does this, where does that fall apart for what uh, you that, and that all makes, are intending? That all makes total sense. Uh, but if you're not pouring in money somewhere. Oh, somebody um, needs to show up and go, no this is awesome. Vine vine. Exactly. Somebody needs to show up and say, this is awesome. I'll take this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Or there can be funds outside of that, possibly an OGM fund that says, hey, pour money in us. And we have really good judgment because we have a vision about a mosaic. Hey, look at our mosaic. Our mosaic is composed of these piece parts over time unfolding. Look, if you pour money in here, it goes into those and this thing, this whole thing moves forward. And we relieve you of the responsibility of sitting here and like throwing darts at the board or trying to figure out who, who's in this community or what's going on. So I think that, that there's an we, intermediary like a, like a fund of some sort. We, um... So we don't have a lot of project mosaic stuff, but we have a fair amount. Um, the thing I feel that we're missing in our ecosystem is uh, we've, we've talked a lot about connecting to money and we haven't at all. I, I think we're severely underdeveloped in connection to money. Um, and I know that I'm on that train in a very slow train. And part of the reason is I don't know what to show them on, on this end of things. And that's why we're having this conversation It's like, suddenly coins fell in my head, you know, where I was like, damn, if, if, if we had the thing we're talking about right now, very fruitfully, I yeah, think that I, I, we, we have enough right now. We're, uh, we're, really? I feel like this is just a conversation at this point. I feel like there's um, been a little bit of effort at the, at the fingertips, but I feel like this is where we're sort of painting pictures in the air, like the cops are doing his light drawings. We have a, we have a really crappy way of expressing it. We don't express our, like we, we, we don't have those, uh, you know, me and Bentley and, and Mark Antoine and maybe even Klaus, we can't say, oh yeah, here's the, you know, here's the project plan for Opal, you know, and here's how much it would cost and here's what you would get. We don't have that yet, but we can wave our hands around all of that stuff. We've been doing it for months and months and months. Um, the thing that we don't have, and so, in my fundraising experiences, you don't need more than that. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's easier to get more investors with a crisper, clearer, you know, takeaway, um, uh, uh, leave behind. But there's plenty of plenty, there's also plenty of investors who invest on crazy, wacky ideas, because they, you know, they're early investors, they like, they like a, you know, so we've got plenty of ecosystem. Um, we're really not selling well. Um, we, we don't do selling stuff. Oh, got it. I'm just, what I'm trying to say, Pete, is that I could not have had this conversation with a potential investor before this conversation. And we're 16 months into OTM, blah, blah, blah. Like, like I, I didn't know how to express yeah. what we've just talked about and how it fits into things, even to paint it with light. Yeah. Okay. And I, and I, and I, and I knew about flotilla and i knew about you and bentley and the zoom chat process post-processing and a bunch of, I, I knew about all those bit parts but i hadn't thought about the mosaic and how yeah. to describe the mosaic so, so now th this week you can pitch it and sell it uh i'm this I, i'm <laughs> or, or do we have to wait for next week i uh, we're, we've been we've been dragging our feet i i watch uh you know in yeah. in my so I'm a maker, not a salesperson. Uh, sales and funding and all that stuff scares the hell out of me. And it just like, it hurts and I, I don't like it. And, you know, but I've been in, in my startups. Um, you go over to the sales team and they're like, oh man, I hate all that figuring out what stuff is, but let me just talk to some potential customers or potential buyers or potential investors, right? Yep. And 
the good salespeople, um, you know, pitch on a hell of a lot less than what we've got right now, a, a lot less. Um, so we're, we're not pitching um, and we don't, and you know maybe maybe it's just not that we d we maybe we don't have the right pitch teams and i think that's part of the problem um we don't have the equivalent of uh, a sales force um and we should and we should figure out how to figure that out i don't know so uh, the ogm sales force if there is one is me um i don't know if why? anyone else i don't <laughs> why, I don't why know would that be true <laughs> well i don't know why if do we else... hire a salesperson at this moment, I don't know of anyone else who is pitching to try to fund OGM. And the conversations I've had have been mostly with the pre-wealthy people who might fund us here, who've taken me in a bunch of different directions that have evolved the idea of what the hell I think I'm pitching, including John Borthwick, who says, like, is OGM a DAO? And I'm like, ah, crap. Like, like what would it mean for, for this to be set up as a DAO? How does that work? What's going on? He points me to a bunch of high-functioning DAOs that are really interesting. Um, I'm trying to absorb that kind of thing. And I don't know how that exactly fits. And I need to have that conversation here as well. Um, go ahead, Klaus. Yeah, I think the when, when Pete is saying salesperson, I would translate this into a grant writer because the salesperson we are looking for is really, um, that's how the, the people who are making a living, you know, bringing together uh, the money, to, uh, the grants to the right places. And they know how to frame stuff. They know what type of funding is available that would be interested in what kind of projects. Uh, so, so that's, that's, and I'm, I think. and I'm slightly allergic to that only because the grant process seems like stepping into the library of tar pits to me, but I, that's only I would, because I haven't been through it probably. I would call it a broker or an angel investor or things like that. I, all of those, you know, they're kind of the same thing. Um, and they, they may be good for different markets. Um, I'm but it's a completely funds. legitimate function. Oh, it's a totally wrote, legitimate I, function. I, yeah. I wrote a grant once when I first retired just to figure out how this works. And I got $120,000 for a small food tap in Coachella Valley. And it was through USDA. And there is a grant. You know, I found one. I let look through a dozen of them. I found one that was compatible in its intentions. And then we applied uh, for it. So it's a, I mean, it's a, it's a skill set that that you know, I don't have. We we don't really have a skill set and a mindset and a network. Usually, um, if you're, you know, if you're a grant writer, or a broker, or an angel, um, part of the reason that you've got um, you've got su supply side deal flow and uh, demand side funding is because you've you've built a network of uh, funding demand already. And so you either know where the grant needs to go or which other angels to contact or, you know, um, which, uh, which early customers to sell to. Um, Mark Anton, go ahead, sir. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, Pete, that we have more than enough to pitch. And in one sense, you're absolutely right. In another sense, I feel there's still a lot of gray zones into how we build this into a value proposition. Like we have pieces and a, a lot of us are technologists pushing their favorite pieces forward, including me. And uh, we have a kind of idea of how these pieces can be useful, uh, but I don't think we have a global value proposition for how these pieces fit together into a process and as I think a lot of us insist, some part of which must be public slash common, some part of it can be private and money-making, but there's still a lot of gray zones there. So I have a bit of uh, unease with you saying we're ready. Uh, and I don't know if we can be ready up to a point because we have also the diverging ideas on some of, the, on, on some of those, uh, which may or may not be fine. Maybe we'll have to create subsets with their own distinct value proposition, and that's fine, right? Uh, but I do think there's an organizing theme between us, which it would be nice to be able to articulate as uh, these projects we have, they're all pieces going towards that common vision. And I'm not sure we have full agreement on the common vision. So sorry to we be have, contrarian here. <laughs> we have gray zones all over the place. And especially, we haven't had a lot of discussions about, about a 
coalesced or a mosaic of solutions that work together to deliver, you know, value. Um, right. So I, I totally agree, completely, totally agree. Um, you know, our the, the 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 thing that we have to sell right now is like a C minus or something like that, um, uh, or a D maybe. Um, and but but I can also represent from my experience getting funding that so. So the, the problems that you have there are not that you can't get funding with that, it's that you have less addressable funding market and, and your price is going to be more dear. Um, it's not that you cannot get funding with even the crap that we've got right now. Um, so, so on the one hand you go, okay, well, if we make our crap less crappy, if we make it a, a better saleable thing, we'll have more addressable funding market and we'll have, um, uh, we can get a better price for, you know, what we're trying to sell. I, that's all true. And I, you know, we need to work on that. Um, and from this conversation, it's like, crap, Pete, just freaking write down the, the Opal thing, you know, um, and, and, you know, and come back next week and, and get other people to help you like make that better and, and pitch it and sell it. But this, my observation is that even at a C minus or a D or whatever our stuff is, our or you know we're we're seventy percent complete or sixty five percent complete on kind of architecture and vision and making and stuff like that. We have a sixty five out of one hundred. Maybe percent it's the wrong thing to say. Um, we have like funding stuff. We're at like a ten or a five or something like that. We're really not trying. Uh, Jerry is our main, main salesperson. Um, Jerry, I loved you to, you to death. I'm not sure that sales is your best and, and truest, highest purpose. Um, and I don't think that you should think that you're the only salesperson. Um, I think- Just de facto. I'm just pointing to the facts on the ground. I'm the only person pitching this thing right now to the outside world. So, not that I so need to be, not that, I sh not that there shouldn't be others. Our, our making, maturity you know I, we're like five years old or something like that and our funding maturity we're like not even a year old we're like six months old or four months old or yeah. something like that yeah. and <clears throat> and there's an imbalance there what what that says to me if i were to, on the board of a startup it's like okay guys you know you need to keep improving you need to keep maturing you're making stuff but oh my gosh you guys really need to like put some of that aside and start figuring out how you're going to sell this thing because you're, you've got this massive maturity imbalance. That's kind of what I'm saying. Um, we're coming up on our hour and I just have two things at this point, <clears throat> maybe three things to say. Number one, um, I've, I've been really lagging on this. It's been crappy. I'm sorry about that. And it's like, I get it. And it's probably not, shouldn't only be me. <clears throat> so two things to add. Um, one is, one of my whales, one of the people I know personally who is on my list of people to pitch to fund this thing is Reed Hoffman. I've had three 90 minute sit downs one on one with him that were lovely. Like we came back and we sit down, sat down in his, uh, in his offices uh, in uh, near Bucks, I'm forgetting, in Menlo Park, I guess, et cetera. And he's really libertarian. And we, we did sort of idea combat over uh, the relationship economy, which was my thing back then and design from trust and a bunch of other things. And he, he asks great questions. We don't really agree on that many things, but we sort of do. It's like, <clears throat> it's really weird. It's not like we're sort of both pulling in exactly the same direction, but there was a really, really fun conversation going on. And I know that at this point, I know, sorry, I believe that at this point, if I sat down and said, hey, there's this thing and you could do this. And he, by the way, is deep into politics, is like on a whole, there's a whole bunch of like hot red fires on his plate right now. Um, and if I came up and said, I got this thing and that looks like putting nail to a tree, um, he'd be like, what are you talking about, I think. And this conversation has actually helped crystallize a whole bunch of what I might say to a person like him. Um, and and that's, why, what's, that's what I meant earlier by, I couldn't have described what has materialized here before this conversation and I feel stupid for it, uh, but that's kind of it. And then the second thing is, if the, if the vision of what OGM is or could be seems to evolve every week, like now it's more a hashtag or a movement than an organization. Thank you, Pete. And we had that conversation and I hadn't understood the differences or reasons for that. And I'm still unclear how to pitch a movement, uh, how, how to pitch somebody to pour money into a movement. So I'm shifting to having them pitch money into weaving the world, which is a show that has a blah, 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 which is then a whole different explanation. 
right? A whole different thing to start describing. And then I have to describe three things. I have to describe weaving the world, which is feeding uh, the big quilt or the big fungus, which is all part of open global mind, which is a movement. And I'm like, hot damn, stack overflow right then, right? Can you give me the, the elevator pitch? And I sort of think I can, but it's really, really hard. And then John Borthwick says, is this a Tao? I'm like, shit, I don't know. Right. And I, I kind of need to buy a year or two of runway to figure all that out. And I think that's the investable proposition is like, can you help us build some of this runway so that we can kick speed so that we can put some primer in the engine, get some people funded, get this thing actually moving. And I can have that conversation, but just barely, just, but, but just barely. Um, and I feel like I'm essential to that conversation. I don't feel like I can tap three people in OGM and say, hey, could you go represent and we'll give you a 10% a finders fee from any money you collect. I don't know that they'd know what they're pitching. And I don't have a deck that says cleanly what we've, what we've been talking about here and what to go in. So I don't know how to offload this. And if we started writing grants, that feels to me like a very slow pace. And Klaus, I totally understand that. Um, I just don't see a bunch of grants out for the thing we think we're building here and how it might glue together. Yeah, let's go Bentley first. Just gonna say real quickly, I, I think that if we do bring someone in and give them a, a commission on a thing they find, their responsibility is to interview you, Jerry, and pull that and help you craft that. So I wouldn't worry about you having to have it. And I think Pete's idea of us writing these things up will be another step forward. So I think that's a great action plan going forward. And then we'll figure that out. And maybe we should think about, are we all willing to pitch in to get to pay a marketing person to come in and help Jerry out in this area? Yeah, Jerry, I just uh, wanted to emphasize the grant application process is a very um, interactive way of doing things. So my experience when I was applying for this uh, grant, I had to talk with the operator of this food hub and saying, okay, here are some adjustments you have to make to your model. You know, this money is available, but there are some things that you don't comply with. So, so I think that's what will happen is when, when we meet, in our case, some really high level you know, uh, uh, grant writers, particularly mm -hmm. in the regenerative space, there's a lot of money slushing around, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, really looking for high level projects that have the capacity to scale. But the, the, and, and the, once we have uh, enough, uh, raised enough interest where someone is saying, okay, this seems to be solid, well-rounded, has many moving parts. Uh, I think we can then iterate our way into uh, uh, something that, that would be fundable. Mm -hmm. and, and on your way in what you just said, Klaus, you raised one of the other, my, one of my other mental problems with grant making, which is that most of them have strings, restrictions, uh, whatever, that suddenly cause you to warp your design. And I'm trying to figure out how to get some clean funding into a, an OGM fund or something else where we can sort of pick and choose the projects and the methods of funding as much as possible. And I think that that's not, described in, in the SBA or, or other kinds of databases, but it might be, and I don't, and I don't know, uh, but I'm worried about restrictions in, in the things we might apply for. Go ahead, Mark and Tom. Oh, you're muted. Oh, there we yeah, go. I, I really want to uh, emphasize uh, something I said is my disaster scenario is we get funding and we don't agree what to do with it. And it's, it's, there's so many things each of us wants to, want to do. And, you know, of course, part of the dissensus is, you know, uh, between some of us and I'm, I'm usually the curmudgeon and we would probably have more consensus if I drop down, maybe that's one solution. Uh, but the, I do think that we need to also take it more as a project and, and, and when, I want to tie this with the other conversation that was happening is, Jerry, you said you're not the salesperson and I agree, but you're also the, you're the, more than the face, you're embodying a certain idea. And when we're pitching, we're pitching the kind of perspective you bring. I mean, when you're pitching or when OGM is pitching, I mean, you started the OGM movement, and I think it's an accurate word, actually, I air quoted it, but, and, and, and I think that you being part of the uh, pitches is actually essential, even if you're not primarily a vendor, because this kind of 
flexible, multifaceted thinking is what I think OGM is trying to sell. And, and then all the tools that enable it and, and, and how to train people into thinking this way and how does one actually take decisions and take action based on that kind and of how, thinking, and how do people which, make which, a is, living? which is still working on. <laughs> right. and, and how do people yeah. make a living inside this ecosystem? That's equally important. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but the, 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 and, and any project that uh, individually helps that, of course, is valuable in its own right, and that way we have good things. But I don't, I still maintain, if we have money, uh, Will, do we really have a path forward, not just to bring pieces that make that a bit easier, but that make that thrivable and sustainable? I don't think we have a path forward yet. So that's my, sorry to hammer it in, but that's why that. And Bentley, the CDL meeting got postponed. <laughs> um, no apology needed. Yeah. No apology needed. Um, now, on the diversity question you're asking, and I think it's a fascinating question, I, and I totally support like if we find uh, diverse, more diverse uh, developers who have projects of their own, that's brilliant. But I think it's also my experience is, you know, ideas beget ideas. So getting somebody to help with some of the projects, but making sure that there's a clear path towards, listen, how can that project inspire you to have your own project uh, is absolutely valid. And so uh, getting, I know it, there's a there's this perfectly unhealthy subordination thing in bringing somebody else up for my project or, or Pete's project or whoever's project. But on the other hand, there is a way to make it healthy so that the initiative is welcomed and it does it stops being precisely one person's project. Um, so that's another thank path. Yeah, thank you. Bentley? Um, uh, so on the diversity front, uh, several ideas. One is going to organizations that are doing OGME things that are um, more diverse than us, like Impact Ventures, um, which I've talked to in the past and I directly asked them, what are some things that we could do? Um, none, none of those ideas really fit exactly. Um, uh, one was uh, that they have a lot of problems with early um, business owners not even understanding enough to do their personal finances. So they can't. So some sort of educational tool where they can do self-directed uh, learning, um, which actually does kind of fit in one of the projects that, that is in my queue where, where people can publicly build um, a training program based on existing YouTube videos and articles. And so it's just like a list of things to go through to learn something. Um, uh, and then also I am mentoring a junior developer who happens to be female and I, I think is not traditionally white. Um, uh, so uh, bringing, bringing those, those people in, uh, uh, and then hopefully they, they would also be inspired to have an idea um, as a thought. So, yeah, so yeah, focusing on, on the needs in the areas and, and stuff like that. And then we just kind of don't maybe highlight that there's a, a white guy who's managing the project and, and that person being more of a, a more of a mentor um, and less of a decision maker. Cause you know, as you're doing these projects, if you're serving the, the, the customer that should really be the one kind of, in charge of the direction and hopefully multiple organizations that need the same product so we get some scale. Just okay. some just some thoughts. Thank you. Um, I think it might be a good moment to wrap this call. I think we have a lot of things to do to bring to next Tuesday. Um, I would love, I feel great about this call. I don't know about you all, but I, I, I'm like on fire. This has been super, helpful to my understanding of what we're doing and how we're doing it and what to pitch, what to tell people we're doing. Um, so I really deeply appreciate that. I also think that, that my mental image of what the dynamics are about our process or, or our, our general activities together as, an eco, as a flotilla of different non-sovereigns in non-guilds in a non-organization um, 
uh, might be moving together into the new economy and prototyping the new economy, which is part of what Jordan has been sort of lifting our chins to look up at the whole time. It's like, hey, uh, we're trying to prototype what the next thing is here. And we're trying to do it with a whole lot of more mature efforts than us. Like the things we were talking about, uh, like all these entities, uh, Sensorica, Disco.coop, et cetera, at the beginning of our call. Um, and I think we have some unique aspects to bring to them a vision that we're holding that is different from what they're after and how this all fits together is complicated and thorny and fun and, and damn challenging. Um, anyone with a want to put a bow on the conversation or shall we wrap it up? It doesn't have to be a pretty bow. It could just be a messy bow. So, um, so going forward from today, uh, it sounds like makers should be writing starting to write up a more crisp you know product offering basically um and then there's a a thing that we talked about today which is kind of an overall um service map or or mosaic of how all these things fit together um and um i don't know that i i feel like our homework is probably just to think about that um, but um, maybe a, an intention for next week could be to start to firm that up and to figure out how we have that conversation, who's in that conversation, what does the work product look like, um, uh, uh, to start to address, uh, Jerry, your concerns about, you know, how, does, how do all these solutions together make OGM and especially Marc Antoine's uh, thing, like, which of these fit, which of these don't fit, which are, you know, which makes sense? How, how do we need to change some of these to make them fit better? Um, what is, you know, what is that picture? And, you know, do we have the right parts? And, and where do we have holes? So it feels to me like two things to work on. One is like, and, and Pete, you sort of already have some of this. I don't know if it needs to, be, it probably needs to be tweaked for what, for what we've learned here, but a template project plan in a markdown file that we can use and replicate. Um, let's coordinate through the build OGM channel on Mattermost so that we kind of have a place where we're talking about these kinds of things. Um, so as anyone uh, fleshes out a project plan and, and finds that it needs to include this or that that's different from what's in a template, let's just let's just add that there. I will take a swing at painting, drawing, imagining a map of the mosaic and how to describe it to anybody. That's really important in what I'm doing. So I need to do that for sure. Um, that sounds great. And we can pick all that up on Tuesday next. Um, I, I want to make an ups or, or um, quick report out on on Massive Wiki. Um, uh, project is going great. <laughs> uh, it's still not usable uh, by a lot of people. Um, uh, so the I, I so I think we have a good proof of it's a little bit more than a proof of concept. Um, uh, it's more of a prototype. We have a prototype massive wiki thing and it works really well. Um, and some of us can see, um, you know, where that gets us. Uh, on the other side, it's not to the point where the folks on this call um, could use a massive wiki to make, you know, a project plan to roll up project plans and, and things like that. So um, where I have fallen back to with a couple different projects is um, let's let's keep thinking of massive wiki as as a centralizing uh, as a way to centralize stuff as a way to collect stuff. Um, but let's also use tools that people are more comfortable with to feed that. Um, so uh, Google Docs is going to be one of the things that is going to, I like, most people can get into Google Docs and do stuff. Um, and then Google Docs is going to be flowing into Massive Wiki uh, real soon now. And a separate question what I, that I meant to ask you, um, Gary has Indie Wiki in motion. I don't really understand much of it right now. I need to sort of delve into it. And I clearly don't understand how Indie Wiki and Massive Wiki might interact, interoperate, what, like what the common ground is, et cetera. No time to really go into that right now, but I'm really interested. And if yeah. there was, if, and if there was a brilliant overlap between the two, I would be very excited. That would be a mosaic win. Yeah. It, right. Um, I would include FedWiki and probably TiddlyWiki in, into yeah. that. Yeah. And other histor other historic wikis. Yeah. Exactly. IndieWiki is fundamentally different. Right? It's yeah. more Rome-like in that every paragraph is its own object. FedWiki has a bit of that, uh, but not to the extent. 
in the wiki has. So okay. it's more atomic data right. objects. Right. It's, it's, it's not tech, as text-based. Makes sense. Um, all right, uh, thank you for a brilliant call. Uh, really, um, I'm, I really appreciate you all. This has been great.